Hello everyone, welcome to Just Invest Today. And in today's video, we are talking about Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com, all the international affairs that these businesses are going to face in the future. We're talking about Howard Marks, Phil Town, talking about the repercussions of everything that's been happening in the market from the Ukraine war with Russia, from the damn whole pandemic happening, globalization in the international affairs with China and US, and how things are kind of changing now. The pendulum is swinging back to the other side. So Howard Marks talks about this in his new memo. So we're gonna get into it in this video. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. I'm providing you guys with so much new content, man. So click that like button, click that subscribe button now. So there's so much talk about delisting happening in the market when it comes to US delisting Chinese stocks from the New York Stock Exchange. And this is having general fear in the market, causing a lot of Alibaba shareholders just to flee the market, especially the institutions. The institutions are leaving China like crazy because they fear that everything's just going to go downhill from now. The, the affairs between China and US is just going to crumble. Alibaba, Tencent, maybe they should go to zero because of the situation happening with all these delisting rules and everything. And basically, Howard Marks talks about how the pendulum is actually shifting to more in-house production. How is that going to affect China going forward? Because we know that there might be decoupling between the US and China, and that's also a big fear. Especially since the Ukraine war happened with Russia, people are scared that China's gonna go to war with Taiwan, causing all this turmoil in the market. So let's get into the memo just released by Howard Marks talking about this pendulum shifting. Europe's heavy dependence on Russia to meet its energy needs. Russia supplies roughly one-third of Europe's oil, 45% of its imported gas, and nearly half of its coal. Sanctioning Russia by prohibiting energy exports would cause a significant dislocation in Europe's energy supply. One of the major trends impacting the U.S. economy over the last year or so, and a factor receiving much of the blame for today's inflation, relates to our global supply chains, the weaknesses of which has recently been on display. Thus, many companies are seeking to shorten their supply lines and make them more dependable, primarily by bringing production back on shore. So now you're seeing what's happening. Europe is actually realizing, like, damn, we made a huge mistake of trusting Russia. And now they're sanctioning them when it comes to gas? European countries are screwed. So what are they doing about this problem now? They're shifting a lot of their resources and supplies by making sure they have enough gas and oil without Russia. So they're going to build up more power in Europe, not depending on Russia as much. So you can see how this Ukraine war is actually shifting the global supply chain issue. And now... When it comes to U.S., they're realizing, damn, we had so much global supply relying on Asia and a lot of these other countries that we now have to shift on shore. So now they're realizing what's been the problem, what's happening. So this is causing, I think, more turmoil between China and the U.S. as they realize that they need to shift more onshore because you have to remember during this past decades and decades we were really supplying on china for a lot of this production a lot of production was shifted to china to generate more money for corporations in the u.s now they're realizing with all these global supply chain issues that they have to go back on shore. So the pendulum is shifting the other way. This is a huge risk when it comes to owning Alibaba and Tencent as relationships with US and China are becoming more kind of fierce because of this issue that's on hand right now. And people realizing like, damn, we were focused too much on globalization and now we gotta bring that all back in line. Here's an example of that. Semiconductors present an outstanding example of this trend. Many of the most important early developments in electronics, transistors, integrated circuits, semiconductors took place at U.S. companies such as Bell Labs, F uh, Fairchild Semiconductor. In 1990, the U.S. and Europe were responsible for over 80% of the global semiconductor production. By 2020, their share has been estimated to be only around 20%. That is crazy. 
Taiwan, led by Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company and South Korea, essentially Samsung, have taken the place of the U.S. and Europe as the largest producers of semiconductors today. Now U.S. is trying to shift away from that. We are starting to develop in-house now. This will be more foundry production in the U.S. because they're realizing, damn, all this time that we thought globalization was the thing to do to generate more profit, to shift demand, to get less workers in the U.S., to get more profit again, this is backfiring on us heavily. So what's happening? We're going to see the kind of divide maybe in the future. On top of that, Phil Town had a lot of questions about the Chinese and U.S. relationship. Investing in uncertain environments, 361. Watch this podcast if you haven't. Ukraine and Russian war? Open your eyes to the fact that China can actually be sanctioned in the future. Like, it's not some crazy concept anymore that your stocks can go to zero when it comes to sanctioning and when it comes to relationships with the U.S., because that's what basically happened with a lot of Russian companies. They basically went to zero because all the sanctioning and all this decoupling from the U.S. market. And if there's ever an issue with China and U.S., these same sanctions, these same implications of the stock market can go to zero. You see how Russia just shut down their market because they didn't like what U.S. was doing. Who's saying that China can't do the same thing? So, Phil Town is asking questions and wants to know what Charlie Munger thinks about this and how he puts this risk in the bucket of Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com because he's saying this is a serious risk if there happens to be some kind of conflict with U.S. and China. And he's saying it's honestly heading that way between a conflict between U.S. and China. But on the same premise... I think U.S. and China need each other way more than U.S. and Russia, especially when it comes to production. There's so much production happening in China with U.S. companies. I just don't see how they can U.S. would even go that route. Like I can, it could happen, but damn, all that production that U.S. does with um, China would just c- cause so many damn U.S. companies to be affected by it, if they just sanction them, they just close off their borders, like, it's just unfathomable that they could actually go that route, but it could happen, so, guys, what do you think about this relationship between U.S. and China, and how this Russian and Ukraine war open your eyes to the fact that maybe China can get sanctioned, China can decouple from the U.S., especially as U.S. is looking to actually be more onshore with their production now who knows what can happen so guys please like this video subscribe to my channel and i'll get back to you in the next video